Hi, everybody. Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. I'm here at the parish house, and this is one of the rooms. I made it into an office. If you've seen some of my other previous episodes, I did some in the office. I figured I'm just kind of switching it up, taking different uh, say angles and things in the house so it's not boring to look at. Anyhow, that's what I'm doing. So I have two questions for you. Number one, what are you doing for Lent, and how's it going? And I'm going to ask myself that same question, and I'll answer that. And number two, what, are, what is something that Jesus can't do? What is something Jesus can't do? And I'm going to read you a scripture, and I'm going to try to pull that up now as I talk to you and see if I can get that up. But think about what is something, let's see here, that you're doing, and how's it going? Now, for me, what I'm doing is to get to bed earlier. That's my, my goal. And I've been doing pretty good. I've had a few flub ups where I stayed up a little bit later and I shouldn't have. Some of them, honestly, is because I just got home and it's practically 9.30 because I was at work at the office or, ch- or doing something like the, the church. And that makes it difficult. Now, you might call those excuses, and maybe they are. But there have been times, like on Mondays or Sunday nights, when I choose to go to bed a little bit later. And here is why. We have, as Catholics, we have our Sabbath, right? And our Sabbath is Sunday. And on that Sunday, we're to not work. That's the goal. Is that perfect? Well, sometimes it can't be. But for the average person, typically, let's just say Monday through Friday, people work. But on Sunday, we're called to rest and, and go to church. This is the Lord's Day. Some people call it the family day, but I'm like, well, it's, it's the Lord's Day, first and foremost. And you can bring your family into that. That's great. But it's the Lord's Day. And the tricky thing is, what do priests do? How do we have the Lord's Day? Now, we do church, obviously, but are we relaxing? Oh, goodness, no. Actually, we are working very hard at Mass and doing other things, and we enjoy that. I enjoy that. But it is work, so I still need a day off. So I take Mondays and have Tuesdays off. So on that Sunday night and Monday, I will sleep in even, uh, but I'll also go to bed a little bit later. This would be the part of my Sabbath rest, you might say. Now, you may not know this, but the 40 days of Lent do not count Sundays, the Sabbath day. And so since I work on the Sabbath, and also the day before on Saturday, so Saturday and Sunday, I need to have that time off. So my Sabbath, you could say, is Monday and half of Tuesday. So what applies for the Lenten rules applies for me then. So what are you talking about, Father Bill? Well, let's suppose you decide to give up chocolate, which that's, we could argue with that, whether that's a good idea or not. But let's suppose it is. And that means on Sunday, you can have some chocolate. You can eat chocolate on Sunday because the Lenten observances are not keyed into the Sunday when we're to be celebrating. And in fact, if you were to count the number of days in Lent, and if you added Sundays into it, you would come up to more than... 40. You might even find like 45 or 46. Hmm? So the 40 days of Lent are not counting Sundays. Hmm. So that also then means you don't have to follow that prescription for your Lenten observance on a Sunday. Now, some people, you'd say they're hardcore Catholics and they want to do this. and like, well, good for you. That's great. But I also have that I'm a hardcore Catholic, you might say, and I want to celebrate what is Sunday for us. That is then a day of rest and relaxation, but mine has to be on a, a Monday. So this observation I have for Lent is then to go to bed earlier. So, well, so that won't, means that I won't go to bed necessarily earlier on Sunday or Monday night. But uh, Tuesday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all those are my observance for Lent. And it has helped me a lot. There has been some time that I've had where work has uh, gone so late that I've come home and I still need to unwind. And I've been tempted to stay up late. Well, I think I shared with you last time, if you cut my video before, I think it was like two or three videos before, the beginning of Lent, basically, where I made my house, I already have a kind of a smart home system, a home kit system, whereby I have it programmed to do an automation. So on certain days, that'd be Tuesday through Saturday, the lights in the living room, almost all of them go off but not all of them. And so if I'm in there, say, watching TV or doing something, most of the lights will go off, but I'll still be able to see. And at 9.45, then all the lights go off. And if I'm watching TV, it will just go off. So now I'm in the pitch dark. So this is my way of helping me get to the bed. So by 10 o'clock, I am in my bed.
going to sleep. So that's what I've been doing. And again, I've been doing pretty good. Uh, there's been some things where it hasn't worked out, as I mentioned. But how have you been doing? Now, if you've been struggling and you find yourself failing or you're failing periodically, you know you still have a week or so, about a week and a half. Pick it up again with maybe some more fervor and just go for it. Try it again. Pick it up, whatever it is you're trying to do. And just know that instead of the six weeks, now you have a week and a half. And just do that. Give it a shot. I encourage you. So that's number one question. What are you doing? And that's what I'm doing. The second one, as I mentioned, is what is something that Jesus can't do? Again, I'm, I'm teasing you, but uh, this comes from the reading on, on Wednesday. I'm actually recording this Wednesday night, but it comes from John chapter 5, verse 17 through 20, uh, 30. It's quite a long text, and it says this. This is uh, the text. If you went to the to masses, Jesus answered the Jews, My father is at work until now, so I'm at work. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also called his own father, God his own father, making him equal to God. Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. The son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the father doing. The son cannot do, here's something, what is it? Anything on his own. And that gets also reiterated. Let me get there to the bottom of that text and that pericope. As we call it, a pericope, a pericope, by the way, is a, a small text set of text that is coherent within itself, like a story that just uh, stands on its own. Anyway, he's in this grand dialogue. He ends this, or at least this, the lectionary ends it with, quote, I cannot do anything on my own. I am, uh, as I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. So there's the answer, kind of a trick question, but what can't Jesus do? Or, well, he cannot do anything on his own apart from the Father. This makes sense because the Father and the Son are co equal. That where the Father is, the Son is. Where the Son is, the Father is. If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. We ask, what does the Father look like? Well, there it is. The image is in the Son. So you, we might say, well, but God can do anything. That's right. And God, because of his nature, being three persons, is one all the time, cannot be separated in union or separated in essence. There are three persons, but it's one God. So the Father came to reconcile us. How did he do that? Through his Son. So in effect, he's reconciling us in himself through his son the application i want to offer then is we are called to follow the son we call ourselves christians so when we go about doing things do we do things on our own well i think it we might think we do or how about do we make all our decisions on our own well, just today we were working on the budget for the school. I think we've come to some conclusions. But before we started, I offered a prayer that God would inspire us and give us creativity to be able to do this, to help us so that we can create a, a budget that is in the black, that is a sound budget, that's balanced, that is good for the teachers, the students, the families, that the quality of education will maintain or get better. But we did it all with the help of God. And I think this is what we need to be doing. If we're to find that Jesus is our Savior, if he's the center of our heart, then we should be following him. And instead of just asking, what do I want to do? Which is not a bad question. I asked the same question of our students in Mass today and, and actually shared this very same uh, reflection. It's okay to ask what I want. What is my desire? But what's better? What's even greater is what God wants. So, as you're going out today or tonight or whatever you're doing in this weekend, instead of just going out and just deciding what you want to do, insert God into that. Ask God into that question and have him help you answer it. Maybe he's going to give you the flat-out flat answer. Maybe he'll inspire you to a good answer. But sometimes we might have, let's say, things we want to do that may be not good for us, or they're narcissistic, or they're selfish, or they're... They're not thinking 
of the whole or the good of others. See, these are the qualities that God might be you know, instilling in us when we ask, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Sometimes it happens when we are thinking about going to Mass, like, ah, I'm tired. I don't want to go to Mass. Well, what would Jesus do? What does Jesus want me to do? This really goes back. Remember the whole, what would Jesus do, WWJD? What would God do? And then do that. See, God has instilled in us desires, and that's great. The hope would be, and it's my prayer for me and, I, and for you, that our will would be conformed to his will. That whatever his will is would be mine. That I would want what he wants. But sometimes I don't want what God wants. So sometimes I have to pray, Oh Lord, help me to want what you want. Know that God has the best intent for you. If you let go and let God, if you surrender to God and you start asking, okay, God, what do you want? It will be quite an adventure. This isn't the small stuff and the big stuff. I mean, the big stuff is our vocation. Instead of asking what I want to do with my life, what career do I want? This would be something I'd ask for or to our teens, young adults, etc. Ask, what does God want of me? What has he placed in my heart that would be joy-filled and also fulfill his will for me? My friends, that's something to pray about. Please pray about that. But it doesn't matter how old you are. That question is still the case for the things we do. Like if you go out on the road, go, go shopping, or you're waiting in the line, or whatever you're doing. What does God want me to be doing right now? Instead of what do I want to do? And just busying myself. Maybe he wants me to be aware of the person in front of me in line or behind or someone around me. And maybe striking up a conversation, just being friendly. I don't know. This weekend, I'll be preaching the homily, and I hope to see you. Please pray for me so that I can offer a compelling homily that will inspire and also help heal. In the meantime, God bless you, and continue with your Lenten observance. Bye-bye.